if you've ever had to teach something in life, you probably know that learning something and teaching something are two entirely different things. Now, a lot of people will see material once, they'll go through it, and they'll say, like, yeah, I know that. And you go, okay, well, why don't you teach it to me? They have absolutely no idea how to teach it. If you don't know how to teach the subject matter that you're trying to implement in this world, that may be what's holding you back. That's what we're going to talk about today. So today we're going to talk about why I teach and why you should too. I don't teach just to sell courses, and I don't teach just for fun. There are so many reasons that I teach, and it has been one of the most beneficial things that I've ever undertaken in my life. And I never thought that I would be a teacher. I didn't see any reason to. But, as you can see here, I have the tried and true eight reasons why I teach and why you should too. And I think by the end of today, you're going to realize that a lack of teaching might be what's holding you back in your career. So number one, we have mental blueprints. Okay, Teaching forces you to develop mental blueprints of the material that are deeply ingrained in your mind. So frameworks that you can use over and over again. I have mental blueprints here, but actually literal blueprints as well. And so what teaching is going to do is it's going to give you a system that you can implement over and over again. And business is pretty much finding one thing that hits in the marketplace and then repeating that success over and over again. So you, eventually you're going to have to come up with a blueprint for yourself. Now here's the thing. If you come up with these mental models, these mental blueprints, you can use these to train your staff when your company starts to grow. So you develop these blueprints and all of a sudden you're teaching to your staff and you're transferring that knowledge to your staff. Now, I still log into my courses. I have a couple different courses and I use them all the time. So I had to teach a lesson the other day and I have a framework, a mental blueprint and an actual blueprint inside of Blockbuster courses that I used to teach. And I do the same thing with WFA. If I need a certain resource, a lot of times I'll just log into my own programs and I'll go to that section and I'll find the resources there, the templates, the blueprints, the frameworks, the teachings, even my, my own stuff that I've taught, and I'll go and I'll follow that and I'll implement it. And so it's like teaching is actually the process of creating these frameworks that we can use over and over again to get a result. So number one, reason why I teach and why you should too, it forces you to create mental and actual blueprints of your process. Two, improved thinking and communication. It forces you to deeply think through the issue and understand it in a way that you can communicate that to others. Now, without being forced to teach, we might be taking things in, but we're not really sorting through and making sense of them because we don't have to regurgitate that out to anybody else. But once you're forced to teach a subject to another person, all of a sudden you really have to think about how to communicate that subject matter. So teaching is going to change the game for you. When I go through a new program or I'm learning a new skill, one of the things that I do is I form a small group of people between three and six people and I'll go through that program with those other people that are also in the program and each week we will reteach some of those concepts. So if you're in WFA or if you're in Blockbuster courses, one of the things that you can do is put together a small group of fellow students and reteach the lessons to each other. That's going to force you to improve your thinking around those concepts and learn to communicate them. Number three, I have myelin. Myelin is the gray matter in the brain that forms in what happens when you learn something. When you look at a, at a pro athlete or a, a musician and you see them perform, it seems almost effortless, doesn't it? And you think, how on earth can that be so easy for them? And it's because the physical structure of their brain is actually built to perform that task. That's myelin. And myelin is produced through reps. So there's that saying, perfect practice makes perfect. That means if you do a task over and over again, you're going to form the physical structure in the brain where that becomes automatic and it's going to become easy. So even complex tasks like difficult musical pieces or elite athleticism are going to actually just become really easy if you have enough myelin. So I was reading the book The Talent Code and is the author or his friend or something. You're playing pool and the one guy goes, I have to warn you, I'm not well myelinated in this subject. And so he's saying he's going to lose pool because he doesn't have the myelin. And all it really means is, I haven't practiced this very much. So teaching is actually going to form that myelin in your brain when you go through and you communicate subjects 
to other people, you're going to form the physical brain structures, and then all of a sudden, that's going to become a lot easier for you to go through in the future. Number four, teaching. So WFA, for example, we teach people how to start a work from anywhere ad agency. We have over a thousand people in that program. Now, do you think I learn what works and what doesn't work in an ad agency when I see a thousand different people go through it? So we find out the 80-20. That's the 20% of tasks in a business that are, can produce 80% of the results. Those are those levers in business where you pull on them and you get most of the results. So what are, what is everything that we're doing in this subject? And which of the things are mostly waste and which things actually produce the results? So no matter what subject you're teaching, you're going to find out what really works and what doesn't. Even if you're teaching how to cook or how to play guitar, you're going to figure out what are the things that don't really matter that much when we're transferring this knowledge and what are the things that are absolutely essential to success. And it's really cool because you get to see it across a wide variety of data points and all kinds of different people and situations, and you get to see patterns through what works and what doesn't. And it's something that you can never even see on your own. Because if I go out there and I have an ad agency all on my own, and I don't see anybody else implementing what I'm doing, I might not even know which of the things I'm doing are the things that produce the results or not. But by seeing other people implement the system, I know exactly what's working and what's not. So find out the 80-20. Fifth reason I teach, and you should too, uh, Teaching creates an evergreen asset. So if you think about a house, right? Let's say that you go out there and you build a house on a plot of land that you own. And after you've built that house, you can rent it out on a monthly basis. And what happens? Every single month, your renter pays you a check, right? And you can rent that house over and over again. So a course is kind of like, a instead of a physical asset like a house, it's a digital asset. It's something that you build. You build that house. You build that course online. And then you can go out there and you can rent it out over and over again. Now, it's also a digital asset, like a movie or a song, which means you create that thing once and you can rent it out to an unlimited amount of people. So a house, you might only be able to lease out to one tenant, right? But a digital asset, a course, you can rent out to an unlimited amount of people. It's like owning a piece of real estate that you could rent to a thousand different people. Okay, that's the beauty of online assets and why they can be so much better than physical assets in some sense, okay? So you create an evergreen asset that you can use for years to come. So my new courses that I create, I really try and create them around evergreen principles so that 10 years from now, I can still be selling that same course. It's still going to get people results. It's still going to be relevant despite the changes in technology and the changes in the times. So these courses can sell forever and ever. If you look at people like Tony Robbins, he developed his curriculum 40 years ago for his programs that he teaches now, that he holds live events for now. So if you go to Unleash the Power Within or Date with Destiny, he developed these curriculums decades ago, and he continues to teach them. So you, you create this thing once, and that can carry you for the rest of your life. It's just like a song. I was listening to a podcast with Everclear. I don't know if you guys know Everclear. He's a... Uh, artist from the 90s. He was in a rap group, but then he also plays guitar and sings blues. And so he says, when I create a song, I'm trying to create something that I can sing for the rest of my life. Because you know that asset is going to pay off over and over again. So the same thing goes with your curriculums. When you create a course, that's an evergreen asset, and you can continue to use that to make money. Number six, to learn. I touched on this. So there's something called the Feynman method, and this is a process of learning made popular by Richard Feynman. And he would make, he was a professor and he would make his students do this. And what you do is you take a subject that you want to learn and you take out a single piece of paper and you write down your summary of that subject as if you're going to teach it to someone else. So even if you don't want to be a teacher, it's useful to teach, okay? Even if it's hypothetical, even if it's, if it's pretend. So you take out a piece of paper, write a summary of that subject as if you're going to teach somebody else. And then that's going to bring up the gaps in your knowledge. It's going to become really clear and obvious where you don't understand that subject and where you do. So whatever you are learning, let's say you're learning how to launch Facebook ad campaigns, take out a single sheet of paper and act as if you're going to teach your brother or your sister or your mother or your father how to launch Facebook ad campaigns and start to write down the steps. And when you get stuck, you're going to realize, okay, I thought I knew this whole sequence and maybe I don't know this part. You go back, you fill in the gaps, you rewrite your outline, and then all of a sudden, once you've taught that, you understand this thing on a really deep level. 
So one of the absolute best ways to learn anything that I learn, I'm going to teach that to the people in my mastermind, then I'm going to go out and I'm going to implement it, I'm going to get results, and then if I can consistently produce a result with that thing, then I might start to teach it to the general public, okay? Number seven, uh, teaching is the fastest path to mastery. I say this all the time, but mastery is the key to success. So a lot of people, they just don't stay in the game long enough to master something, and that's why they never get the success that they want in life. It's like an instrument. It's, it's painful to start something new. You're going to be really bad at it at first. Over time, you're going to start to get better and better. But the people that really reap the rewards at the very top are only the people who have mastered that thing. Mastery is the key to getting what you want, okay? You have to stay with something long enough to become a master. And teaching is the fastest path to mastery. And that's for all these reasons that we listed. That's because you're going to myelinate your brain. That's because you're going to improve your thinking around that subject. It's because you're going to form these mental blueprints. It's because you're going to find out the 80-20. All of these things play directly into mastery of a subject. And so teaching is just making all these things clear. That's everything you need for mastery. And then number eight, I have impact and transfer of knowledge. So if you're teaching a subject, it doesn't mean you have to sell courses, but maybe you run a company and you need to teach things to your staff, okay? So teaching is how you're going to transfer that knowledge. Or maybe you want to pass things on to your children, or maybe you want to help your friends out in life. So it doesn't have to be an actual course, but oftentimes we want to transfer the knowledge. We put in all this work to become a master of something in life. We might as well transfer that knowledge instead of doing nothing with it, right? And then impact, of course. Developing your teaching skills is one of the best ways to make more impact. And that's because I can work with one-on-one -on -one clients and I can help them market their business or I can package that up into a course, give them my mental blueprints and give them the 80-20 of what's going to get them results and then I can impact thousands of people. So to increase your impact, eventually you're going to have to switch from a one-to-one -to, -one to one too many model. It's going to increase your impact, it's going to increase your income, it's going to take you to the next level. And the way that you do that is teaching instead of doing, okay? You do something until so you've mastered it, you've figured out the 80-20, you have the mental models around it, you have repeated results with that process, and then you switch from actually doing that thing to teaching that thing to become a master of it. Seeing that across so many different people, so many different data points and situations and scenarios that you otherwise would never be able to reach that much yourself because you're just one person. Teaching's how you kind of multiply yourself, clone yourself. So I teach all the time now, but I also encourage um, my friends in work to teach um, to each other, to learn. I also encourage my staff members to teach, to internalize things, and develop processes and systems and experience. And then I also want to encourage my audience and my students to teach, to learn the subject. So if you're struggling getting results with something, or if you're struggling to really deeply internalize new material, just find a friend who's learning that same material, meet once a week, and then teach those topics to each other. And then all of a sudden, you're going to have to think through it. You're going to have to form those mental models. You're going to have to myelinate your brain. And you're going to start to understand that subject on such a deeper level. And then eventually, when you go out there and you start to crush it in your business, in your life, in your health, in your relationships, with finances, whatever it is, whatever area of life it is, eventually you're going to want to give back. Okay, After you've gotten results, you're going to want that greater impact. So why I teach for these eight reasons, but why you should too. So you can form mental blueprints, uh, so you can improve your thinking and communication around that subject, you can myelinate your brain, you can find out the 80-20 of what works, you can create an evergreen asset that will pay off for years to come, to learn using the Feynman method, because it is the fastest path to mastery, and because it is the way that you create impact and transfer your knowledge. Let me know in the comments, do you teach right now? If you don't, why not? If you want to teach, what's standing in your way? And if you want to learn how I've learned how to teach, after teaching for years, thousands of people, and realizing I wasn't very good at it in the beginning, and then getting better and better at that, and finding out what actually works, if you want to see those frameworks, I put them together in a free training at blockbustercourses.com slash free. That's all for today. I'll see you next time.